Good afternoon and welcome to more MTI. Today is size comparison day and also kit bashing day. How exciting is that? I've already done some kit bashing because I personally think that the why the night attack stinger didn't need more missiles because it already had missiles from the uh, SMS system or HMS system. And that already gave it its missiles. So I went, okay, look, the Joes, they need something to fight that his tank. They, they don't have anything except for a single bazooka that can go up against the, the, the his tank. The Joes are just outmatched when it comes to the his tank. And here the Cobra come with a, with a rocket launcher that shoots four of these rockets in addition to their anti-armor drone. What armor does the Joes have? They only have is the FAMP. That's their only armor. That's kind of why the, I thought that the HasLab this year was going to be something uh, tank-based for the Joes to make sense of all this anti-armor stuff that Cobra's been getting. Who are they fighting? Because they're not fighting the Joes with this stuff. The Joes don't have the uh, the equipment that these weapons are necessary for. So I think that's just another hint that, you know, the Cobra is fighting the Transformers. And the G.I. Joes are just stick stuff with, uh, you know, scratching their butts going, what in the world is going on? Uh, so with that being said, uh, and my, my suspicions, oh no. Oh no, I popped it off its hemming bone. That's not good because a figure's attached to it. Okay, so I guess we'll just talk about that. Oh no, and that guy's fell too. Okay, so you know we're done with the with the uh, ex, you know showcasing. I had two Cobra Troopers standing on the back. Each one of them had one of these machine guns in their hand, and then I moved a machine gun, and it popped one guy off, and then that guy popped the other guy off, and it's just it's just a calamity. Uh, so so we're just we're just we're, we're removing them from uh, from where they can do more damage. Will you stand up straight, please, sir? Pop that. Hip hinge in. Thank you. All right, let's fix this hemming bone connection where we've got the, uh, actually, the, the rocket, not the rockets, the machine guns don't actually use a hemming bone, which is very weird. I know. Um, this is, I guess, before they decided to standardize, but, you know, this came out just, just a few months ago. There it goes. All right, cool. Both of these guys are back in their positions. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. So for today, and uh, let's just go ahead and get these guys pushed back here so we can move our vehicles around a bit and not worry about accidentally running over a Cobra infantry. That would be terrible. That would just simply be terrible. So in front of me, I have the Cobra Night Attack with the, uh, with, uh, the HMS behind him. And this is just... Wow, okay, uh, so you can't really push the SMS down uh, uh, because it's going to run into the, the machine guns. You can just lift it up a little bit or spin it around on its little axis and then lower it down going the other way. And that does, that does kind of even things out a bit better. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Look at that evenness happening right there. Ooh, yeah, it rolls quite smoothly. I do think, you know... This thing on the back of, of the his tank is one thing for, like, transporting long distances. But this thing on the back of something like this night attack stinger is, is in my opinion, a better deal. Because this vehicle can get up to some high ridges and locations that the his tank cannot get to. Though this trailer can get to. It's just that the his tank is too big and too wide and too heavy to get up some of those narrow mountain roads and things like that. Or go down into some ravines to better hide your uh, your missile system so that the Joes can't find it. And that's what this guy's for. That's what this Jeep is for. It's for getting weapons and material and man manpower into locations that other heavy vehicles may find it quite difficult to enter. You know? uh, so let's go ahead and take off our fun little piece here. It is a little difficult to take off. You kind of got to push it forwards and then pull it out, uh, stretch it out for its his tank configuration. And then you can reach in here and have enough free space to actually wiggle that guy around. We're just going to wiggle it around a bit till it unlocks itself because it's, it's locked in there. It's locked in there. There it goes. It's unlocked. Okay, cool. We can push that stuff back down now. There we are. There we are. Excellent. Excellent. So that is... The HMS. I just wanted to showcase it with the HMS. We're going to set the HMS down on the floor. We are actually going to extend its legs so it doesn't go, you know, flopping about all over the place. I love the fact that this thing's got these legs. 
that they make it where you just make this stationary platform wherever you want. So we're going to make a stationary platform right down here on the floor. Boom. And it's not going to go anywhere, and I'm not going to kick it over. It's not in a location I generally walk. All right. Now, time for the comparison that I know you want, and I know I want. Let's bring out our vamp. Oh, vamp, you have been... You have been a treasure of my collection for the past few months. Yes, you have. I just absolutely have enjoyed having you around. Um, I put some... Uh, so I got the engineering rig. Uh, the the big old rig that came with the... The Wreck and Slam. Wreck and Slam rig. That's it. Oh, my God. Um, so I got the Wreck and Slam rig. And it came with a bunch of little plastic chains. So I decided to put the chains and they unhooked themselves. They're supposed to be hooked together. There we go. Good chains. So they just kind of hook down below. I like the fact that you know, the G.I. Joe vehicle's got a few chains. So size-wise, these guys, they, they weigh about the same. There's not much incredibly different. I do have to correct something on the shovels. I... I was thinking that the shovel that came with the G.I. Joe here uh, was rubbery compared to the jo shovel that came with the Stinger. I'm correcting that. They're the same shovel, and they're also made out of the same materials. So let's put Stinger shovel back, and we will put the... There it goes. And we could put the Vamp shovel back. Yep. Just going to show you that Scrap Iron did indeed take the plans from G.I. Joe for the vamp. Or G.I. Joe took the plans from Cobra. Though I think if they'd taken the plans from Cobra, they would have used the crazy big engine. That's awesome. Instead of just, you know, using this to hold a crate and a little bitty, like, a high-speed engine piece. I don't know. Um, but these guys are the same length, except that the... There's a bumper on the back of one of them, and then there's gas cans on the back of the other. Sadly, sadly, the gas cans I don't think can move. I think that would have been a really fun and an interesting thing to do if we could actually have removed these gas cans. But I think they are included. Let's spin it around so that individuals who can see can see what I'm talking about with the gas cans. Yeah. See, we got those gas cans back here, but they... um. They're attached, and they don't unattach. They are they are permanently in there, which is kind of a shame. With the um, with the addition of this bumper, this gas can area would become very. Uh, I actually think that this gas can area could work as a different thing when the bumper is attached. Oh, that I forgot it has an axe. Yeah, the GI Joe vehicle has an axe attached to the gas can area. There we go. Let's put this back. I slipped it out of its spots. I forgot about that axe. I really did forget about the axe. Uh, so you can, and let's do it for the showcase right here. Let's take this bumper off of the G.I. Joe, uh, the Cobra Stinger. It's that easy to take off, by the way. You just, you just pop it and you go. And now let's see if we can actually fit this bumper onto our G.I. Joe vehicle here. Let's see. Will you attach, or are you going to be a butt? Let's find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Those uh, those gas cans are really getting in the way. That entire gas can assembly bit is really getting in the way there. I don't know how to remove it without damaging it, and I don't want to damage it. Uh, let's see if we can figure out something to do. Maybe... Maybe those little slats under there are good enough. If we position this stuff right, we should be able to pop these things up into those slats. I did, did manage to do one of them. Let's see if we can do the other one. Let's pull this gas can out for a second, and let's take a look what's going on in here with my fingertips. Okay, so we've got... All right. Now that one's supposed to slip up into that spot. Oh, wow, they actually... It's actually the right fit. It's just getting it at the right angle. And it seems there may have been a little bit of error or something because it's not wanting to fit into that one little spot. Hmm. Let's try this again. Okay, lined up on either side. Because the way that this works is if you don't line them up precisely, it's not really going to fit. 
and it's not even going to lock into place so long as the center bit has a problem. Oh, I see what the problem is. Okay, so we're going to slide that just over here just a bit, and we can slide it just a bit more. Okay, so that popped in, but that didn't pop in. Okay. So it looks like, uh, unless a uh, subscriber of mine can explain it to me in the comments, I think that this is not, it's not switchable. I don't think it's switchable at all. I don't think you can actually get the, the bumper where you can position more people onto the back of the vamp. It's just, it's just not happening. I wish they had shown us how to do it on the videos or something, but it's just... It, it's that it's the stupid gas can thing if uh, if we had the ability to take that off and rearrange it it would be it would work it would it would absolutely work but if we don't have the ability to take off this gas can holder it's just it's just not gonna work so I have a feeling that vamp version 2 is going to be the vamp that you can actually put these bumpers on and we're going to get vamp version 2 I hope in a couple of years because uh, my wallet needs a chance to recuperate Please, SS86 Optimus Prime is coming out this year. <laughs> oh man, um, so that's the that that's a big difference between the two vehicles is where the Cobra Stinger has a lot of pieces on it that are movable and extractable, and you can rearrange a lot of stuff on the Stinger. You can do the same with the Vamp, except for this gas canister thing in the back. I don't know why they did that. And it didn't take me until just now, like talking to you, to even think about that. Why is it that this is a piece that's solid on there? Why is it that this piece can't be taken off as easily as everything else on the vamp can be removed? And it's just a shame that it seems like that was an overlook on the community, uh, well, on the engineering part there. The engineers totally overlooked the ability for this to be removed. Um, they kept talking about planning ahead and planning forwards. But it seems like, you know, no matter how hard you try to plan ahead or plan forward, something's always going to slip through the cracks. I don't blame you for it, Hasbro engineers, uh, the G.I. Joe Classified team. I get it. Some things slip through the cracks. Just uh, take a note and in Vamp V2, whenever you get around to it, uh, switch that up. Change, change this gas can out or this gas little basket out and put something else there. Okay. So up here on the actual vamp, I have the Stinger missile system, which is for some reason being stupid. What's what's going on here? Why why were you facing down and also not connected? Okay. All right. So there we go. I guess it was Sugar. Sugar was up here earlier, playing with things, making a mess. Okay. So there's that. It's positioned. I have the bazooka on the back of the vamp. It's a uh, its little strap is being held in by the uh, fire extinguisher holder. All right, so there's the stinger missiles on the back of the vamp. Now let's go ahead and spin the vamp sideways. There we go. I like the stinger missiles on the back of the vamp. I think that works out a lot better for the vamp. That that makes more sense with the fact that the vamp's got the uh, the controls inside on the dashboard to ma you know manage the the uh, rockets and also even though it's going to be very loud to launch these rockets it still in my opinion is a better platform than the stinger and the stinger is a better platform for the machine guns because cobra does not have anything that can put a lot of lead downstream it, it's got the his tank has got a few things that put a lot of lead downstream but when it comes to cobra you know their their motorcycle didn't have that much of, uh, you know, didn't have machine guns. The uh, G.I. Joes have got three ram cycles now that all have a big machine gun that can put a lot of rounds downstream. Uh, the, you know, you've got one of them that carries around the giant chain gun. And it's just Cobra, Cobra's missing out on, on giant machine guns. Uh, so I just felt it was fair to give Cobra a giant machine gun. And since the Joes have been missing out on missiles and have just lackluster when it comes to missiles, it was time for the Joes to get themselves some missiles. And I appreciate the ability to do that little bit of kit bash. I just wish I could have kit bashed it a bit more on um, on the uh, the bumper. Now, something else we can do here that's fun. We can kit bash it with these lights. We can come over here and pop off the 
spikes. Where's my little thing? There we go. Yeah, we could pop off the spikes and we can give the vamp some lights. Isn't that nice? Yeah, the vamp's actually got lights now. That's cool. Um, you know, this vehicle made me think of a vehicle from video games. And uh, I know it's not exactly the same, but it was probably... Uh, mo the vehicle from the video game was probably modeled after the vamp. And that's um, in StarCraft 1. There's that one cutscene where two two military people are driving in a jeep that's very you know that, that that's similar to this jeep it's actually a vehicle that you never get to play with in starcraft it's not something you can build in starcraft and they uh they hit a zergling and i just remember that scene you know oh it looks like you hit some poor man's dog sarge that ain't no dog lester this here's a zergling the smallest type of zerg but they're not normally found alone like this Oh, oh no. And then the Hydralisk eats him. And it's a beautiful movie. I love the little cutscene. It's awesome. And uh, it's explaining explaining how the Zerg get to that planet. but Or that the Zerg are on that planet. But I, I just, I like that. And the, the, the spikes at the front of the vehicle made me think about that. Like, it's a Zergling, Lester. <laughs> just, that line has stuck with me since I played the game when I was like eight years old or something. You know, when it first came out, I was it just, it's a Zergling, Lester. <laughs> Cracks me up. Okay, so let's go ahead and take away the vamp. Uh, let's put let's put the spikes back on. I like the spikes on my stinger. Yeah, the spikes are cool. It needed the machine guns to make it just, just that much more deadly. And let's go ahead and put our vamp down on the floor so we can bring out the other vehicle I was going to compare things to. We're not going to do a big vehicle comparison today because maybe I'm just talking and having fun. There we go. It's carefully set down. The vehicle that I'm going to do a comparison with is the vehicle I've decided is the, um, the Dreadnoughts vehicle of choice for now. The Dreadnoughts get a vehicle, right? Yeah, the Dreadnoughts do get a vehicle. And the Dreadnoughts vehicle is always going to be a vehicle that is the best vehicle uh, especially for the Dreadnoughts. And this vehicle is, of course, the monster truck. Yes, uh, the Dreadnoughts get a monster truck because, you know, why wouldn't they have a monster truck? You know, think about it hard and tell me why wouldn't the Dreadnoughts own a monster truck? It just, it, it works for them. It works for them. And I love it. And the monster truck is awesome. I've got, um, I've got Ripper driving because... Ripper just seemed like the perfect driver for the monster truck. The monster truck doesn't have any windows. And then I have um, Zorana standing on the rear of it uh, with her crazy machine gun chainsaw thing that she totally pulled out of Gears of War. Uh, so let's go ahead and take Zorana off. And that way we can do some fun things. Let's put Zorana down over here amongst the troopers. The... And let's look, just, just look at the size. Boom. I love it. I love the monster truck from uh, from the, uh, the, the WWE Wreck and Slam line. Uh, the monster truck is the perfect addition to the Wreck and Slam line because there's so many pieces in those vehicles that can be you know taken apart by bashing into things. So having something that you can just put on a wheelie and then have it come boom, bashing down is awesome. I love it. And this just, it's just such a big vehicle. And it was so cheap. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, you can still pick these up for, for pretty cheap, I'm sure. I love the Wreck and Slam line. If you ever want to make me a blind, you know, make me a happy blind prime, you know, just send me. Uh, talk about sending me some Wreck and Slam mobile stuff or Wreck and Slam stuff, because it's all just fun. It's all just good fun. And let's put the motor, yeah, the, the, the monster truck here closer to me because we don't have much space to work with. Monster truck is big, it's wide, it's gruesome. There we go. Uh, yeah, the monster truck isn't isn't as long as the vamp is. It's just so much taller than the vamp. So much taller. The vamp's actually got to position its guns upwards in order to shoot at the driver in this vehicle. So wild. Just love her. And then rolls over the windshield and then rolls all over everything. Monster Truck is probably the, one of the more fun vehicles that they've come out with in, uh, in 
in a while. I do like the one twelve scale monster truck. It makes me it makes me so happy. It just it just makes me happy. Anyway, uh, I do have more vehicles, but I don't really want to showcase them with you today. This it this this thing is is very similar to the Vamp, and I did a big showcase for the Vamp, and we intend here at Blind Underscore Prime to bring everything out and talk about all the vehicles when the Dragonfly arrives. So no worries, you're going to see this guy compared to everything whenever we bring in the Dragonfly. It's those big items like that I want to showcase or big moments in the channel. Like when um, when I first got to 1,000 subscribers, I set up the, the big... Uh, showcase day where I, where I compared the sizes of a lot of vehicles, all the vehicles I had, in, including my roommate's HasLab Sentinel, just to give you an idea of just uh, the insanity that these things can get to in size and scaling. And, oh man, I, I do wish I had picked up a, a, a Sentinel because that HasLab Sentinel just pops with all of the G.I. Joe stuff. It just pops. You get that little ram cycle driving around the Sentinel's foot, and it just feels as if the Sentinel could pick its foot up and just slam it down on that ram cycle. It is just, wow. Wow, the Sentinel is amazing. Every, everything I've come across from HasLab has, has been great. And speaking on that, I did want to talk, before we go, about missiles. I did want to bring up the missiles because I told you yesterday we were going to do a missile size comparison. And here I am not doing a missile size comparison. And we're almost done with today's video. So I'm going to grab a missile from the Stingers. We got one missile there. Okay. We need another missile from the uh, HMS. Missile acquired. Now we need the other two missiles. Actually, three. Let's see, the other missiles are over here. We just have to get one from you. Come here, sir. Give me your missile, Mr. His tank. Thank you very much. And anti-armor drone, give me your missile. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. We've got all the bigger missiles, the vehicle missiles, uh, that have come in to the series so far. We've got all four of them lined up here, and we can slide this guy back a bit to give ourselves a nice little area. And where is my vamp? Because somebody in the vamp is wearing the the uh, bazooka. Come on, bazooka! There he goes. There's the bazooka rocket. So, Lyle, little size comparisons so that you, you can get an understanding of scaling for these things. The Bazooka rocket is the smallest rocket that I'm, I'm showcasing. Uh, there, there's a smaller version, but that's Metalhead's rocket. We're not going to get into that. Um, let's see. we got to have something. I don't know where my handy-dandy Lego pad went today, but I do have a handy-dandy Lego plate. Okay, so we're going to compare this to the Lego because I think Lego sizing is pretty standard when it comes to the fact that most people in the world have something similar to Lego nearby. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the regular bazooka rocket is six studs tall. It's, n it, it's a stud wide. Yeah, it's a stud wide and six studs tall. It's a tiny guy. It's a tiny guy. Next size up, let's, let, let's compare them by sizes. Okay, all right, and you... Wow, so the his tank missiles aren't even as large as the Stinger's missiles. Okay, here is anti-armor drones missile. The anti-armor drones missile, as if you can't see, uh, if you can't see, uh, is uh, already much larger than the bazooka missile. It's actually taking up this entire Lego pad. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve studs tall. Uh, Width-wise, it's two studs wide isn't it? Yeah, because this is a four stud wide thing, and it's two studs wide. Yeah. Uh, the fins make it almost four studs wide, but I'll put it at three. If we slide it over one, we get kind of three studs. So I'm going to put this at three studs wide, 12 studs long, and it is a weighty guy. He's got some girth to him. He's got some mass to him. Where's my little, little rocket? All right. Now, 
let's compare these two beside each other. There we go. A little, little comparison. I like the rockets. I like the fact that we've got so many rockets now. Here's the... Hi, sugar. Hey, sugar cat. Who's a good sugar? Yeah. Sugar just came back from the vet last week. Poor thing. Turns out naming her sugar gave her rotten teeth. Uh, you know, you got to be careful how you name things because sometimes, you know, you name things something sugar because she's all sweet. But then somehow she gets rotten teeth. It, it's just, what in the world, sugar? What in the world? Now, we got her teeth taken care of, and now she's a very happy cat. Now, let's move on to comparing the, the anti-armor drones missile to the missile coming from the his tank. And the missile from the his tank is one of those rounded front missiles that doesn't look really cool, but it's, it's very effective. And this uh, missile from, where did I put my, my Lego pad? Here we go. So the missile for the his tank is, I'd give it 13, maybe 14 studs long. And it is also two studs wide. It doesn't have as big of a fin as the, uh, as the, sting, as the anti-armor drone missile. Instead, it's just girthy. Like, the entire thing is, is, is thick. It is a thick boy. He's thick. And he's also got a hemmingbone connector. We're going to talk about that connector real, after we discuss the missiles and go over what, you know, what we can and can't connect to. Now, finally, the Stinger missile is, whoa, uh, it, it, it is definitely taller. That's for sure. I'm going to give it a lot taller. And that, that, that's for very sure. Let's see. Sugar, sure. I, I'm in the process. I'm in the process here. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, four, five. So 12 plus 5 is 17. 17 studs tall. Now let's see how wide it is. It is staying about the same width as the other missiles. That one's the one that's surprising me here. With all the missiles we've talked about, except for the tiniest one, for the rocket launchers, uh, for the bazooka's missile, they've all been the same width. Uh, really, really well done there, even at the widest point. Like, this guy's widest point makes him four studs because of the uh, the little fins in the center bit, but that's it. Uh, at his widest point, he's actually the same width as, uh, not counting the fins, but at his widest point, he's at the same width as the G.I. Joe Classified Series his tank rocket or missile. All right, and now finally, we've got the big boy. We've already measured this thing out to be massive. This is a very, very, very large missile. Sugar likes the missile. Don't you like the missile, Sugar? You want to you wanna rub against the missile? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sugar likes the missile. All right. And we're going to put that up there. And there it goes. Okay. And finally, so that's two so far and then a little bit extra. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six. 12 and 12 is 24. 24 and 6 is 30. 30 studs tall. Now, the, you know, the, the biggest difference, other than this being 30 studs tall, as opposed to the other ones, is that this is actually four studs wide without the fins. The fins make it more on the six stud wide scale. This guy is huge. He's a big, big boy. He is a big boy. And that, those are the missiles. Now, let's, sugar... Sugar, I hope you didn't mess with the bazooka missile. Good. Let me put the bazooka missile back because it's something I worry about losing. Shove it back in its little carrying case there. Now, where is my... Where's the missile loadout piece? Oh, it's back. Cool. All right. So, before I let you go, we're going to do a little experiment with this missile loadout real quick. And we are going to play with other missiles and see how they look. Okay, so we can't use the anti-armor drone missile that doesn't have a hemmingbone connection. We can try the missile from the his tank because that has a very similar connection port to this missile. Let's see if they actually made it standard. Hmm, doesn't want to fit. Maybe it's backwards. Let's check. Let's check. Okay, so it fits into that spot and it. <gasps> oh. Oh yeah oh yeah i'm very happy with this they fit they fit let's do it let's do it let, let, let's switch them out let's switch them out we're we are we are switching them out okay i'm gonna gather up all of my big old stinger missiles and we're gonna go put them back and get three more of the his tank missiles oh yes this is exciting
One, two, and three. Because, you know, why not? Why not have a lot of fun with this? It's fun to kit bash, and the creators told us that it was going to be a thing we can do. So let us do it. Okay, hi, Shipper. Who's a oh, sweet cat? Who's a sweet thing? You're a sweet thing. Unlike Cream, who's a big bossy orange cat. Did you really have to take out the monster truck? And did it really land directly on the vamp? Well, at least I took Serana off the monster truck. And I hope Ripper's sunglasses didn't fall off. Cream? Not cream. Sugar? Why? Why do you do these things? Oh. Huh. Ripper's sunglasses didn't fall off. That's really cool. Uh, so let's let's compare. You know, let's get this done before Sugar destroys something else in my room. <laughs> All right. So that that missile goes there. It's not a strong connection. It's not as strong as a connection as it could be, but it is. It it fits. It fits. It's just not as tight because where the the missiles that you get with this are made out of some weird rubbery plastic that seems to be a, an extra grippy style plastic. The missiles you get with your Hiss tank are all ABS. So they don't, um, they, they don't grip as well as the other missiles grip. And there's also this little connection area it, where the other missiles would just kind of hang out in their little homes in there because they're so thin. These are going to sit on top of the little missile homes. There's these little ed raised areas where the missile obviously falls into place and rests in these little cradles. But these guys are going to sit right on top of the cradles. If it can go in, there it goes. And finally, one more. Yeah, we got there. All right, you're going to have to do another one. Um, I suggest Sticky Tack. If you're going to do this at home, Sticky Tack will work. Sticky Tech is my friend. Sticky Tech is your friend. Sticky Tech is everyone's friend. Except the cat. The cats do not like the Sticky Tech. It gets on their paws, and then they run around with their <laughs> swinging their paws all over the place. And I have to save them. Ah! Nuts! Alright, so I advise using a uh, some Sticky Tech to hold this in place, but it does work. It does work. That is a cool thing that I didn't know you could do. That is cool. I like it. I think that this is an amazingly unique addition to the G.I. Joe Classified line. And it's a wonderful vehicle. It's a... The missiles are fun. The world building aspect of this is fun. So, at the end of the day, I'm going to have to give this vehicle a perfect score of 10 out of 10. It is wonderful. And Sugar absolutely agrees with me. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Where did I put my zapper? Oh no, where did my zapper go? Sugar, I'm going to have to pick you up now. Sit over here on me. There you go. No, no, go down there. There you go. Good sugar. I gotta find my zapper. Where's my S pin? My S pin battery's low. Here it is. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Please tune in to Prime. To, tune in next Prime. We're going to be talking about Transformer Studio Series concept art Sunstreaker. So until then, bye bye for now.